Hello everybody! Hi! Kamusta kayo? Uh, I am back. I don't know if you noticed, but last week we were, uh, we had to do a replay because um, something was really bad with my internet. We didn't have internet for like two days. And if uh, you're uh, living in 2020, you know that not having internet is like um, having no electricity, diba? So, so we were really, um, you know, uh, going out of our heads. And the kids were having a hard time having class. So thank God we are back online and we're praying for a good internet connection tonight. And yeah. Lag. Ayan, naglalag na. Lord, bahala ka na. Hi, Patricia. Kamusta? How was your week? Where have you been? Uh, where have you gone? <laughs> I hope all of you are doing well. Um, hi, Anna Ramos. Where are you guys from? Uh, I... I what did I what I I went far last week. I was able to reach the far um, city of Alabang, <laughs> of Muntinlupa. Uh, I haven't been out, as uh, many of you know. I haven't been out, but yet um, I had to go to Alabang and see my uh, dentist because uh, I was having a toothache last week. So yun ang aking pasyal for the. I know for the month. Grabe, no? Hi, Christelle from Belgium. Yeah, and si Christelle and John Shang ating uh, ano, wife ng ating feast builder sa Belgium. And Doris, of course. Hi, Doris. Good morning over there in New York. Wow, exciting naman. We have um, Europe is represented. And uh, oh, Patricia. Said she had a tough day. Oh no, you didn't have water. Oh my gosh, what area are you in? You know, siguro having no internet is, you know, um, next to not having water. No, magka, magka, ewan ko kung uh, magka, <laughs> sinong uh, lumalamang doon. <laughs> Pero yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I think I can endure not having electricity. But then, of course, if you don't have electricity, you won't have internet. But yeah, pero <laughs> grabe. Yung tubig, medyo challenging yun talaga. Hi, Mitch, Lou. Oh, thank you. Yeah, praying for good internet connection. Yay, thank you. And ah, sa Valenzuela talaga. Naku. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I pray that your water will be restored soon. Lalo na ina pandemic, we have to keep on washing our hands, di ba? Sabi nila. So um, while we're waiting for the others to log in, please do, you know, um, uh, tag your friends and uh, uh, share the video. Hey, you know what? Tonight, for the first time, we are doing Instagram Live. Oh, di ba? How millennial is that? So, so we're on FB. We are on YouTube Live, and we're also on Spotify, not live, but we upload. But tonight, for the first time, Instagram Live. Oh, diba? Alam nyo, I learned that, oh, you know, all these different social media, they're, they're like different planets now, like, like different countries. So people who are Instagram users, you know, for them to go to FB, parang kailangan silang sumakay ng aeroplano. So today, we went to their country by going live on Instagram. Hi, Glenda. Kamusta? And Nalia Jo is there. Hi, and G Gonzalez. Yay. Hello. Hi, Yad. How's class? Ayan. Sa team, sa laya, binabati ni Yad lahat, pati hunger clubbers. Yes. Amen. Praying for a stable, good connection tonight. Yay. Okay, guys, get ready with your Bibles because um, I want you to um, open your Bibles. We're going to be jumping um, uh, you know, a lot of um, uh, uh, Bible verses, but yeah, mostly in the book of Genesis. So um, don't worry if you don't have your Bibles with you. We, we have PowerPoint um, slides ready anyway, but yeah, we'll be talking about God's unbreakable word. Okay, yay. 
So um, I'm muting my phone and it's 8.05, so we're going to start now. We always start with prayer. So we come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the week that was and the week ahead. Thank you for every blessing that we enjoy. Thank you that we're alive and we're well. And um, we thank you that despite the struggles that we face, the hardships, we are still here and you are good and you will always be good. And so we pray, Lord God, that tonight we, we may just allow us to relax, to sit at your feet, to listen to you, to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and to minister to us. And we trust, Lord God, that um, you will, in you we will find rest. In you our souls will uh, be beside restful waters. And uh, we ask that you be our shepherd uh, tonight, Lord God, as we once more open your word and once more learn um, about uh, scripture and receive the fullness of your message for us this evening. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray, Lord, for a stable internet connection, not just for me and for the Hunger Club team, but for everybody who is watching this. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Yay. Hi, Marife and Mon, Samson. Hello. Good evening. Okay, we're going to start now. And our title uh, tonight is the unbreakable word. Ayan, itagamo sa bato. Only God's word is worthy of being carved on stone. Why? Because He alone can make promises that He will surely fulfill. So how can God say no to something He has promised? So tonight we will be exploring God's unbreakable word to us believers. But before that, our hunger club tradition, joke time muna! So, si Juan, tinatanong si Juan ni Pedro, Juan, ba't pandak ka? Sabi ni Juan, kasi bata pa lang ako, naulila na ako. Sabi ni Pedro, oh, ano namang connection nun? Sabi ni Juan, ano pa? E di syempre, walang nagpalaki sa akin. Ngwe, ngwe, ngwe. <laughs> Okay, okay ba? Huh? <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you found that funny. <laughs> okay, so now we're starting off with our teaching tonight. And you know, our God is a covenant-keeping God. You know, what He promised, He will fulfill. We often read about the covenant of God, you know, in scripture, we hear about it uh, when we attend mass, uh, but we don't, um, many of us don't really understand the power behind a covenant. What is the nature of a covenant? Let's let's just, um, you know, look into the um, characteristics. You know, I was reading about it and um, I found three characteristics of a, a covenant that stood out. Number one, a, a covenant is an agreement okay it's an agreement between two parties who agree on making a covenant so what they do these two parties they cut an animal into two um to represent each party becoming of one spirit and we read about this in the book of genesis when god made a covenant with abraham so let's read from genesis 15 verse 7 to 10 itong sabi so we read, then the Lord told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldeans to give you your la this land as your possession. But Abraham replied, O sovereign Lord, how can I be sure that I will actually possess it? Remember, this is um, Abraham. He left the land of his forefathers and then he went to a land that he did not know about. So God promised him that land. So here's Abraham asking, um, how can I be sure that I will actually possess it? And the Lord told him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. 
So Abraham presented all these to him and killed them. Then he cut each animal down the middle and laid the halves side by side. He did not, however, cut the birds in half. So um, by doing this, so this is how God and, and um, uh, Abraham sealed their covenant. And by doing this, it's like saying, may I be cut into two pieces like these animals if I don't keep my part of the covenant. So it's, um, this is, uh, uh, so it's very clear, no? Um, yung, yung, uh, very graphic, you know, how they seal their, their covenant. And this is also where the saying comes from. You know, when we say, oh, let's cut a deal. I, I cut a deal with that person. That's where this saying came from. This, that's where this saying originated from. Because um, covenants in the Old Testament, in the past, they would literally cut an animal into two. So that's one. That's the first one. Um, covenants um, have an agreement. The second one, covenants have curses and promises. So the two parties would read promises and curses involved in the covenant. So it's very clear, um, parang they say, if, if we do this, then you will get this and I will get this. So very clear what each party benefits from, the responsibilities and also the advantages of each party. Then the third nature of a covenant is its permanence. So usually, covenants, especially those mentioned in the Bible, they lasted <clears throat> beyond the lifetime of the parties involved. So, so it took effect. Um, it took effect even for future generations. Imagine that. So the difference between a contract, because these days we, we hardly have covenants, although the word covenant is used in many of our contracts. But the difference between a contract and a covenant is that a covenant is personal and relational. You know, when covenants were made between two people in the Bible, it was because they wanted to come into a relationship, okay? Both of them wanted to come into a relationship with each other. An example of this is marriage. You know, marriage is a covenant because you agree to be one and you have a relationship with each other. You agree to build your life together and raise a family. So it's also an agreement that has an effect beyond the lifetime of the two parties involved. No, my permanence, yung, yung um, covenant of marriage. In fact, it's, you know, till death do us part. It's lifetime. But even after the lifetime of the people who are involved, the two people involved in a marriage covenant, you know, the next generation and the generations after them are affected, you know, because, you know, of course, the next generation springs from, from that union, from that covenant. So a contract is different because um, oftentimes we make a contract because we don't trust the other party. It's like uh, we make sure that the other party will keep their end of the deal. You know, we want to make sure that we cover ourselves. Na may habol tayo if things go sour with the other party. So a contract is um uh, is what I signed with a company who hired me as a consultant. And you know, when when I was signing that contract, it explicitly states that there is no employer-employee relationship. Ay, wala kaming relationship. Diba? Walang personalan, trabaho lang. And I deliver what they want, and then they pay me, and then tapos. You know, no other um, relationship other than that. Um, so that's the nature of covenants. Now, let me share with you some examples of covenants in the Bible. Do you realize that there are blessings that we enjoy today because someone made a covenant with God and God is still keeping his end of the bargain? Wow, you know, when I realized that, it was just so... It was just so amazing to me that I'm benefiting, um, I, I'm receiving blessings because somebody was faithful. Not me, you know, not, not somebody who even lived during my lifetime, but people in the Bible uh, made covenants with God and it is still blessing you and me. An example is Noah's covenant with God. 
You remember that story? Of course, all of us know, know the story of Noah's Ark, di ba? Um, Noah's covenant with God. What was God's promise to him? If you remember the story, um, uh, God's promise to him was that the world will never be destroyed with flood. Let's read from Genesis 9, verse 8. Turn there with me. Okay, Genesis 9, verse 8 reads, Then the Lord told Noah and his sons, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will flood waters kill all all living creatures, never again will a flood destroy the earth. Then God said, I am giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come. Kasama tayo dun. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is the sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. So since the time of Noah, the world has never been destroyed by flood. Yes, I know that sometimes, you know, every time Bagyo season, you know, the storm season comes to the Philippines, it does feel like sometimes that the world, our entire world is being destroyed by flood. But really, God's promise was that um, the entire world will never be destroyed by flood again. And he gave the rainbow as a promise of that covenant. So every time you see a rainbow, remember God's promise that he will not destroy the earth with flood ever again. Even though sometimes talagang parang dilubyo nga ang mga bagyo sa atin. <laughs> okay, second covenant that I want to talk with, um, to you about is Abraham's covenant with God or God's covenant with Abraham. And we read that from Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Okay, um, let's read that. The Lord had said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you and that that's what i was mentioning earlier you know when i was um when when abraham was asking god how will i know that i will possess the land this was god's covenant with him god promised abraham land descendants and blessing and this blessing extend it, it extended beyond his family and his own descendants it went it extended to every family on earth including yours and mine imagine that we are blessed because of Abraham, the the is uh, the nation of Israel, they are God's chosen people to this day because of this um, covenant that Abraham made with God and God made with Abraham, and because of God's covenant with Abraham, He saved the Israelites time and time again. You know, throughout their history, even when they sinned, even when they were unfaithful to God, even when they merited punishment. God would remember Abraham and save his people. You know, there are people, there are Christians, um, there are believers to this day. They support Israel. They protect Israel because they believe in this promise that um, God is, has blessed his people and that those who um, bless them will be blessed themselves. And uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's why even America is uh, on the side of Israel. They protect Israel because the founding fathers um, believe in this, that God has blessed um, Israel as uh, his chosen people. And, and that's amazing, right? Um, so um, the third um, covenant that I want to um, share and talk about today is God's covenant with David or the, the Davidic um, covenant. And we will um, read about that in 2 Samuel 7. So um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. That's still in the Old Testament. 2 Samuel 7 verse 11. And it reads, Furthermore, the Lord declares that he will make 
a house for you, a dynasty of kings. So this is God talking to David. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name, and I will secure his royal throne forever. So um, God fulfilled this promise to David because David's son Solomon, remember the story? Um, David had a, a child with Bathsheba and that was Solomon and Solomon became king after David and it was Solomon who built a temple for God. David wanted so much to build a temple for God because he said, why am I living in a, in a palace while um, the, my, the Lord, my God, the living God is living in a tent? Um, and so he wanted to build a magnificent temple for God. But God said, no, you are not the man to build that because um, you've lived a life of violence. You know, the story of David, he killed, he, he did a lot of wars and he killed a lot of people, uh, conquered a lot of nations. And, but God promised that your son will be the one to build me a temple. And that's what King Solomon did. But even that, um, uh, the, the, the promise of a royal throne forever, God fulfilled um, uh, because um, uh, when Jesus came, Jesus was the fulfillment of that promise. So um, this was, uh, yeah, when Jesus was born, um, that fulfilled God's promise to David because um, Jesus came from the lineage of David. If you will remember, you know, the, the genealogy uh, of Jesus that we read from um, the book of uh, um, Matthew, uh, especially during Christmas time. You remember that um, you know, David is the father of Solomon and Solomon is a father, you know, all that, the 14 generations plus 14 generations plus 14 generations from Adam all the way to Jesus. That was the line of David. And so God fulfilled that um, promise to uh, David. Um, so, I shared some of God's covenant um, with man, that man made uh, with God, so that you can appreciate that when God makes a promise, he really keeps it. Many of the blessings that we receive, again, you know, I've said this, are benefits from covenants or promises that God made with people who were alive long, long before you and I existed. So our God is really a covenant-keeping God. He didn't have to bind himself. Think of it, huh? Our God did not have to bind himself to us with a covenant to prove he's trustworthy. We know he is, he, he, but he did it anyway. Um, and he did it for you and for me. You know, God does not forget his promises to us. He's careful to keep his part of the bargain, even when we're not. You know, some of these covenants took centuries to fulfill, um, like God's covenant with David. But God did as he has promised. We read from 2 Timothy 2 verse 13. Okay, 2 Timothy is in the um, New Testament. And um, we read, it says, If we are unfaithful, God, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny who he is. That's, that's something that's wonderful about God. Thank God. That's his nature. You know, God's nature is being faithful. Um, he cannot go against it. He can't go against his nature. Um, there was a time when our young builders and peace servants were getting married one by one. So um, we'd have, I was attending a series of wedding receptions. And uh, one of the games that they liked to play during those times was this game where the players would be given a question about the couple. And then um, the couple, the players, would have to either tell the truth or invent an answer and make it sound credible. I forget what they, they call that game. Um, so um, they, they loved getting the feast builders to play it. And they would always get Bo to be, you know stand up in front and be one of the contestants. And then they'll get maybe Alvin, Arun, and other, Odi, you know, the other feast builders. Um, but uh, if Bo was present, Bo would always be there playing. And, you know, Bo, for the life of him, couldn't keep a straight face whenever he would invent answers. So the thing is, you know, you, you invent an answer or you tell the truth, but you make it really sound like you're telling the truth and then people the audience votes who told the truth but you know Bo he could not um Bo Sanchez is uh, who I'm referring to he could not 
tell a lie with a straight face. You know, he would just stand there in front and with the mic and he would just be laughing and laughing and laughing and he wouldn't be able to um, even talk. He would just die laughing and everybody would just laugh along with him. He couldn't make bola, you know. That's what it means when we can't go against our nature. I remember a story that my boss told us and you know it's probably a story that also came from Bo. Uh, there was a monk who saw a scorpion drowning in the river and the monk pitied the scorpion so he scooped it up with his hand to save it um, but as he held the scorpion in his hand and was about to put it in the uh, river bank the scorpion bit the monk so he jolted and he dropped the scorpion again back into the river but again, the scorpion was, you know, drowning in the water. And the monk again attempted to fish the scorpion out of the river. And just when he was about to um, put the scorpion down on the on land, the scorpion again bit the monk's hand. And then he jolted again and, and the um, scorpion was back into the river. And then there was a man watching this happen over and over again. And uh, until he couldn't, um, you know, um, uh, keep quiet anymore. And so he, he went up to the monk and he asked the monk, he said, why do you keep saving the scorpion when it keeps biting you? And you know what the monk said? He said, it's the nature of the scorpion to sting, but it's my nature to save. Isn't that beautiful? You know, just as God is faithful to us, we too have to be have to strive to be faithful in all our, of our ways. Just because we are unfaithful doesn't give God, you know, the permission or the license to become unfaithful because he will not go against himself. You know, brothers and sisters, sometimes there are people who are mean to us. There are people who are rude to us. There are people who, um, you know, look down on us or who don't um, uh, value us the way um, they should. Um, but it doesn't give us uh, the right to also be mean to them or to be rude to them or to take revenge. That is not our nature as Christians. As Christians, Jesus teaches us to forgive, to love, not to take revenge. And so let that not be in our nature that when somebody, you know, you eye for an eye, that when somebody steals from us, then it gives us the right to steal from them also. No, um, the Lord is teaching us that um, we can still act in goodness. We can remain um, faithful. We can remain um, being Christian in virtue, even if other people are unfaithful, because that is what our God is. God is uh, faithful. Even when we forget to keep our part of the bargain, even if we forget to keep our part of the covenant, our God remains faithful to the covenant that he made with us. So what can we learn from this? Um, well, number one, you know, um, for our part, we know God. God has, um, you know, has no fault in our in uh, fulfilling His part of the covenant. But for our part, what can we learn? Number one, let's re remember our vows to the Lord and fulfill them. You know, there are many promises that we make to God, especially during times uh, of, uh, you know, desperate times. Lord, please deliver me from this one, one time. And I promise I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. Or Lord, please, if I just get this deal, Lord, if I just get this job, if I get this project, promise, Lord, I will start tithing, di ba? Nakailang projects ka na hanggang ngayon, hindi ka pa rin nagtatithe kay Lord, di ba? Let's remember our vows to God and Let's fulfill them. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 4. Okay, so Ecclesiastes is in, um, in the Old Testament. Um, verse uh, Chapter 5, verse 4. It reads, When you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to Him. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Okay, so that's where um, in the New Testament, Jesus talks about making oaths. I swear, I promise, I'll do this, you know. And so when, my, when I hear my kids saying, I swear, I, I tell them, don't use that word. You know, um, the Lord tells us that our word should be yes and or no. 
you know, it should be sufficient for us to just give our word. We don't need to swear by it because we should be people who keep our word, uh, who, people who keep our promises. So, um, you know, recall whatever vows you've made to the Lord and ask him, have I, have I um, you know, ask yourself, have I been faithful? Have I kept these promises that I've made to God? Could it be that the answer you are praying for has not arrived because you still haven't fulfilled your vows to God? Hmm. Palaisipan, de ba? Second thing that we can learn from our um, from covenant um, making God, from making covenants with God, you know, people may forget, but God doesn't. I hallelujah. God never forgets. You know, there are people who make um, promises to us, but they forget it the following moment. You know, I had a ninang who promised to give me something precious as a gift when I was a child. Nag just ko na ako, nagtrabaho na ako, nag-graduate na ako, di ba? Nag-asawa na ako, may mga anak na ako hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin yung promise niya. <laughs> you know, people may be like that. Um, but God always remembers his promises. Um, Rachel, uh, the wife of Jacob, uh, we, we've um, studied her. We've uh, read um, some passages about um, Rachel and Jacob in previous um, uh, Bible studies. You know, Rachel was barren. She didn't have children. Um, while her sister Leah, uh, also the wife of Jacob, had sons one after another. And yet Rachel remained ch childless. Then here comes this beautiful passage from Genesis 30, verse 22. And I want you to underline it in your Bible. I want you to mark it so that when you feel like God has forgotten you, you have something to remind you that says, um, Genesis 30, verse 22, Then God remembered Rachel's plight and answered her prayers by enabling her to have children. In the Bible that uh, I was using when I was growing up, it said there, then God remembered Rachel. Then God remembered Risa. Then God remembered Yad. Then God remembered Helen. And God remembered Glenda and Ma Maria Fe and, you know, Doris and... Uh, you know, everybody, God remembers all of us. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Um, third thing that we can learn um, is that our righteous lives benefit the next generation. Oh, di ba? Hindi ka lang pang ngayon. Pang future ka pa. <laughs> di ba? God remembers devotion and He rewards it. So what inheritance are you leaving your children? You know, the life that we live today, it's really not just for our lives. You know my story. I've told you my story many times. How my mom, you know, um, the legacy of my mom and how I've inherited her faith. You know, that was one of the, um, the most precious thing that my mom left me. Um, let's read from Proverbs 13, verse 22. And um, Proverbs 13 has a wonderful passage that says, um, A good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth passes to the godly. Oh, di ba gusto niyo yumaman? Ayan, oh, be godly daw. Because the wealth of the sinner will pass down to you. Oh, di ba? <laughs> you know, there's a, a song I remember from my youth. It's a Christian song entitled Underlined um, by Billy Gaines. Oh my gosh, I don't know if any of you, um, if any of you know this song, please put a comment because I, I, I know very few people who would know this song. But anyway, um, you can find it on YouTube actually. I found it on YouTube. So the song is about how the uh, songwriter or the singer found his mom's Bible a few days ago, and his mother had already passed away. But as he was um, looking through her Bible, um, he grew teary-eyed uh, because uh, as he looked at the verses and words that his mom had underlined in her Bible, and the chorus goes, underlined were the words about commitment, underlined were the words about contentment, 
underlined were precious promises that calmed her doubt and, and her fears. Underlined were words that spawned the love she'd shown throughout the years. I remember most the things she emphasized. I knew her heart by the things she underlined. Oh, the bite. I was so touched by that song. It still remains with me to this day. And you know, my my desire, every time I underline my Bible, you know, I, I always um, think of that song. And I, and I think that, you know, maybe one day someone or maybe my kids or whoever will find my Bible and they'll be, they'll be teary. I, they'll be touched, hopefully, you know, and they will read. I also write notes on the sides of my bibles and you know maybe they'll they'll um, know the lord more because of um the notes that i left in my bible so it's my desire for my children and my grandchildren to read through my bible and my prayer journals and my notes and my books and build you know on the foundation of um commitment and surrender that i've also inherited from my own mom so i just want to um you know encourage you to be faithful to the lord to be faithful to your covenant to god to to your promises to god because our god is always uh, faithful he will always be faithful to his promises to you you know god's covenant with us is simple he said i will be your god and you shall be my people Obey me and I will bless you. That's God's, you know, basic underlying covenant if you read throughout the Bible. And so I pray that we will learn to be covenant-keeping people just as we have a covenant-keeping God. And we shall all be blessed beyond what we can ever dream of or imagine. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Can I lead us in prayer? And I want to pray for you as we end this. I also want to um, pray for your week ahead. I know a lot of um, you have um, challenges, uh, you know, um, happening. So, um, yeah, let's pray. And then um, I hope you don't, uh, you don't leave right away because I just have a few announcements after we pray. So we come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I thank you for all of my brothers and sisters who, um, uh, you know, stayed with us here at the Hunger Club and though, all those who will be watching this on replay. I pray, Lord God, that you would um, bless us in our week ahead. A lot of us have um, different challenges. A lot of us are, um, you know, struggling, whatever financial needs and Lord, we Lord, we pray that you may provide for us, provide for us, and continue to protect us, Lord, throughout this pandemic, providing um, for all of our needs and drawing us closer to your heart. Um, for those who have been sick in the past week, Lord, we pray that your strength may be upon us. We pray, Lord, that you may bless us with the best of health. For those, Lord, who are looking for jobs, um, looking for alternative sources of income, those who are gunning for, um, you know, um, deadlines and uh, uh, their, um, uh, you, um, their goals, Lord, their sales goals. Uh, I pray, Lord God, that you may help them meet their uh, quotas for um, this um, month. Uh, and I pray, Lord, for those who are fearful, those who are um, afraid, those who have members of their families who are in danger or who are uh, sick. I pray, Lord God, that you may grant us faith, that you may grant us peace, that you may grant us um, healing in our minds and in our hearts. For those who have broken relationships, I pray, Lord God, that there may be reconciliation and healing. And we pray and ask all these in Jesus' name. We also pray, dear Mama Mary, that you may continue to pray and intercede for all of us. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Yay! So before we... 
before we end, I want to thank everybody who um, joined us. I'm, you know, you know what I do after I log off? I stay on on StreamYard and I read all of the messages that you um, post and all of your comments. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for posting. I really, um, I'm really blessed and I, I'm encouraged whenever I read your comments. Um, so before we say goodbye, I just want to announce next week is the first Monday. Oh my gosh, can you believe that? September is over. Next uh, week is already October. And so we're um, having To Relova, um, Feast Builder uh, in Makati, as our preacher. And his um, talk will be about encouragement. So he says, be a Barney. Encourage people encourage people oh diba so that's going to be on october 5 here at the hunger club please don't be absent so we're going to have to over and then i want to thank everybody who gave generously to um the jeremiah foundation i'm not going to mention your names because i know you uh, many of you specifically told me not to mention god knows who you are and i don't wanna uh you know um lessen your blessings in heaven by mentioning your names but you know who you are may the lord return to you a hundredfold and if you've been blessed you want to pass on the blessing you want to pay it forward please do um uh give uh to jeremiah foundation you can take a screenshot that's our um uh, our bank account and jeremiah foundation is one of our mercy ministries and <clears throat> it's a mercy ministry that specifically takes care of sexually abused girls we have a, a dozen sexually abused girls, uh, 18 and below. And um, the month of October is very, a very crucial month for us because we are moving to a new house. Um, God is, uh, you know, um, we're trying to uh, uh, streamline our expenses, you know, because of the pandemic also. And we know that um, people are... Uh, um, having a hard time. We also rely uh, on your um, generosity. So we want to cut down our expenses. We, right now we're living in a rented home. And so we're, we're moving out of that um, home just to save uh, on um, rent. And so we are, um, uh, we have to build our own um, home eventually. And so that's one of the things that I will be um, campaigning for in the, in the months and uh, hopefully uh, yeah, and, and um, a couple of years to follow but yes thank you for your generosity if god has touched you please do um give to jeremiah foundation okay and um uh, again we are on um spotify if you want to you know replay your uh exercising your driving your um doing whatever you're cooking you can listen to our um uh, podcast on spotify and on apple podcast we're also now on ig yay on risa sings on Kaoping, and also on youtube uh in feast makati district channel yay so again uh in behalf of the team the hunger club team the hungry quarantine team <laughs> i'm risa sings on Kaoping. see you next week with tora lova stay blessed god bless you all bye